Hi there, my name is Cole, and in today's video we are going to do something very special because today is the 20,000 subscriber celebratory video, I guess. Um, and so yeah, we have 20,000 subscribers, so thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you Jesus for helping me get here because we could have never gotten here without you. Yeah, just massive thank you to all you guys who watched the videos, who bought the instructions, joined the Discord, left comments, etc. Because obviously, we wouldn't be out here without you guys. So, for, so, in today's video, we are going to be doing something that I have been wanting to do ever since I realized it was a thing on YouTube, and I'm going to be answering your questions. So I asked some of you guys on YouTube, some of you guys on Instagram, just ask away, and so, let's answer some questions. Alright, I'm going to skip any car requests, like, will you build this car, can you build this car, etc., because there are a lot of those, and I just build the cars that I like, really. Um, and I might like the car that you request, and so I might end up building it. Um, but I won't answer that right now because it'll probably take too long. Alright, let's go. Henry asks, I was wondering what your favorite car is that I haven't made a mock of. Mock being my own creation, which I will refer to as model. And in this case, that would be the Ferrari F40 LM or the Lamborghini Diablo. I have built a cyberpunk Diablo, which I never made a video on. Um, those of you who follow my Instagram will have probably seen it. But I want to build normal Diablo and I want to build an F40 LM. I probably want to build an F40 LM more badly, although just barely, so yeah. But I should clarify, because there have been like tons of F40 mocks out there, and I want to build the pilot white and blue, or blue and white livery, which I think just looks so good. Really the only reason I want to build the car, um, and that should be coming up in a couple months at this rate. Lego Autos asks how I started making videos. So if you go way back to like, towards the beginning of 2020, I had taken the official Dodge Challenger set, uh, two pack with two Dodges, I took the, the Challenger from the set and I made it 8 studs wide to go with the new 8 stud wide sets. And I made a little video highlighting it. Now this video kind of took off, I'm not sure why, if it was like a brightly colored car or people liked the idea of the 8 wide conversion or what, and so I was like, oh I should make a couple more of these. But I just kind of made it for fun because I was like, oh why not highlight this, I don't really care if anyone sees it, I just like to highlight my what I did to this model because I honestly kind of enjoy doing it. Uh, and I basically still do that today, um, it looks a lot better. Brickstig asks, what's the best car model I've seen by anyone? And normally I would say something like there are too many builders to choose from, and that there are tons of people who just do so many cool models that it would be very impossible to choose, but it is in fact possible to choose my favorite builders. That's not to say the other builders who are not my favorites are worse. They're just like, I, some people I feel like can, are just maniacs who are so good at this, it's like impossible to get that good maybe. And so those people would include, but not be limited to, the G Bricks, especially just anything recent he's done because I don't know how, he, he's just a madman. He just like makes these super parts dense, super detailed, super intricate uh, cars, a lot of cool Lambos. I especially like his Centenario, which I had built for a little while and I actually got a picture of it with the real Centenario. So so I think that model is really special. Mimi Mini Bricks does some incredible models. He's not nearly as well known as a lot of these guys, but he just does some absurd stuff. I really like his Lotex C1000. I think I might have suggested that he build the Lotex, so I guess I'm biased, but he just did some really wild stuff with that. I should say I'm friends with most of these guys over the internet, so it's, I guess I'm kind of biased with all of them. And carbohydrates, uh, but he does some really insane, super clean, six wide builds. Leo One, again, I'm biased because I'm friends with him. He doesn't really smock often when he does. They are really sick. John Elliott on Flickr, I can't remember, I think it's J.E. Brickworks on Instagram. He does various scales, but he does an incredible balance of details and just really clean builds. NV Carmox, really detailed models, and he chooses some really cool weird cars that a lot of people just build normal cars. He does all the cool stuff, he does top gear stuff, he does weird like hatchbacks and things, which I think is really sick. Um, that's just off the top of my head. There are so many more excellent builders out there, but those are some of my favorites. And Brickstig also asks what the most difficult car to build was. And for me, that would be the Zenvo TSRS, closely followed by the McLaren F1 GTR. Both models were built at times when I just didn't have much time to work on them, so it took like three months. I think the Zenvo may have taken four months to finish. Now, even if I had like all day to work on these, it still would have taken me a while because that both of those, especially the Zenvo, were just some bizarre techniques that took a while to think up. And so, 
yeah, it's a fun build. I enjoyed doing it, but it took a long time. Sam asks, are you willing to paint and or modify bricks to build what I want? When I started building models, I was more inclined to modify stuff. So for example, the very old GT2 RS, which some of you will remember, I chopped up some fenders to get it to look right. Um, this is not something I would do today, although it makes for some like great memes and stuff. So I'm, I'm kind of glad I did it. It's still right there on the shelf, actually. I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but it's right back there somewhere because I'm like, if I take it apart, what am I gonna do with these chopped up fenders? So more recently, the ways I have modified bricks include custom stickers, which isn't really that much modification, but it's not entirely purist. I've painted wheels, which is probably the least purist thing. I have attempted to paint parts for the new GT2 RS, um, which didn't work that well, so I didn't end up using them. And I have used some 3D printed parts, but other than that, I wouldn't really do much more. So yeah, I'll paint parts like wheels and, some, and stuff. I feel like it's not a big deal. Um, but I feel like painting individual like little tiny parts is maybe almost too close. I wouldn't call it cheating because I'd be fine if you did it and I wouldn't really care. But I probably would do it myself. Freaky Fresh Beans asks, what are some building techniques that I use in my models to help improve them? Well, there are a lot and as you build more models you will kind of make a library in your head of different techniques you can use. But one of the most useful like Lego things to learn is just the way that different brackets and snot bricks, studs not on top bricks, and stuff like that go together to make different like clearances and heights and things because you can do some super like weird advanced stuff with that and I, I don't know how it works still I'm still trying to figure that, that out um, but if you can learn that I feel like that would be super useful. Emmanuel asks if I ever think about making a boring car model which I do I do build them occasionally I built the Camry a while back which some of you may remember which is based on a friend's real car I built a Sienna which is also based on a friend's real car although I never built it, I just designed it digitally. I made, a, I did a custom order of a older Camry, so it seems all the boring cars I make are Toyotas, and I'm not against making boring cars at all, I don't, although I do not plan on making any more at the moment. Don Hui, I feel like that's not how you, I pronounced your name, but I'm not sure how I, I'm not sure, that's, I'm just going to leave it at that. Do I think Danny is a good mock builder? Now, only some of you will know who Danny is, and if you know who Danny is, you know he's a good mock builder. In fact, I put him on the list of people that I mentioned earlier, my favorite mock builders. And can I make a short of throwing the angle grinded Porsche in the toilet, um, which is references this, this video, which some of you may have seen. I do art asks how I would recommend starting a model. Now, usually when I start a model, I start with the part that I think can be best, can be maybe most easily translated into Lego. For example, with the McLaren F1, I think I started with the either the sides or the front because I had a general idea of how it would go together. With the Zenvo, I'm pretty sure I started with either the sides or the rear. With the Murcielago, I think I also started with the front because I wanted, I knew I wanted to try something with wedge plates. For the Viper, I think I also started in the front for the Viper as well. Usually it's either the front or the rear. Uh, so yeah, front of the Viper, the GT2 RS was a modification of an older model and with the older model, I can't remember, I think I probably started with the front. So yeah, usually with either end of the car and just kind of go from there. I do art also asks what are tips on improving your mocks and really it just build more mocks. Um, if you have a mock that you like but you want to get better take it apart and turn it into something else because just the more you build the more you know about building mocks and that's just kind of how it goes. Just practice like basically everything. Real Co Poolman, I assume that's how you say that, asks, do you think anyone can build great car mocks? And I would say yes, I think with practice anyone can build great car mocks and now I, I sound like the chef in Ratatouille. I can't remember his name. Now, yeah, I don't, I'm not against sounding like him. It's just like, that, that's, a, I don't know. Brick is BRC, I assume that's how you say that, asks, what, which is my favorite German car brand? Now, if you know me, uh, it's Mercedes. If you don't know me, you might know it's Mercedes because I have built, let's see, I've done the W140 S class, I've done the W210 E class, I've done the W124 E class, I've done the W201 E class, I think it's an E class, the, the 190 E basically. I have done the C124 C class coupe. I've done the G Wagon Cabriolet, and I have work in progress CLK GTR and R129. So, yeah, Mercedes. Inferno Titan asks if I could daily drive any car in the world, what would it be and why? And honestly, for a daily driver, I would not mind a boring car. I'm fine with like a, a nice Lexus sedan. Well, I'll find any nice, reliable sedan, really. It doesn't have to be fast. I don't know why you would want a daily driver to be fast. Like, reasonably fast, of course. Like a normal, like, fast stuff to be safe. But I, I could not see driving like an RS6 daily. Like it'd be fun, but I can't imagine the gas would be cheap. I assume that thing would go through gas at a very quick rate. So yeah, you daily drive SBJ, Murcielago, whatever. I think that's awesome. I would like to drive something, well, normal, even boring, just like 
a nice sedan, Lexus Mercedes, like I said. So for the sake of answering the question, I will just say like Lexus LS. Like I'm looking at my neighbor's Lexus LS right the out the window right now. And like that would be a, a great daily driver. That basically would be perfect. Um, although a wagon would be cool. So like a, a Mercedes wagon or something. The Shield Generator asks if I think it's better to design cars in studio or in real life. Now studio is the digital building software that I used to design a lot of my cars, basically all of my models at this point. Now for me, I vastly prefer building in real life because it's just a lot more enjoyable. You can experiment much easier and you don't have some, then you don't have the sometimes finicky controls of digital building. But if you're like me and you barely have any parts sorted or you just barely have any parts or you need to just build stuff quickly for custom orders and stuff, then Studio is perfect for that because it's still really good and you can just throw stuff together super quickly if you have an idea. And so much preferred IRL and by basically always end up building in Studio. Super Builders asks, what's my favorite JDM car that I have not built? JDM being Japanese domestic market, which basically just means Japanese car at this point. I would say the Acura NSX, maybe the R version, because I don't think many people have done that. Every JDM car has been just built multiple times by every builder in LEGO. And I think that's cool, but like, I don't really want to build any more at this point. Uh, because I, I built a bunch before and then it's like, okay, cool, I don't really care anymore. <laughs> so yeah, NSX, although I doubt I'll ever end up getting to that. Orange Juice Simpson asks, how many mocks have I made? Now, I'm not sure what the exact number is. If someone wants to go count, go for it. Although I have plenty of unreleased ones and stuff. So I think it's probably something along the lines of 50, 60, 70. I do not know. I'll have to count sometime because there's a lot of, go through some studio files, I've looked for some old pictures and stuff. And then you want to count only car mocks. Do you want to count only uh, every other type of mock because like that's just counting car mocks like 50 60 so something like that Balash Balash I, I think it's how you pronounce your name I hope it's how you pronounce the name I'm, I'm probably wrong asks if I'm planning to do any rally cars in the future and in fact I am planning on doing a rally car very soon I have a Lancia Delta Integrale prototype right here and so that should be released uh, relatively quickly here other than that I'm not planning on doing any more soon the Real Sleepy asks, where do you pick the cars you build and where do you start? As for picking cars to build, I just keep a list, like a Google Docs list of all my favorite cars that I think are just really cool. For me, this is like basically a list of 90 supercars and AMGs and stuff like that. Um, and for you, it could look very different. But basically, just anytime you see a car and you think, oh, that car is super sick, that's like a car I love, just add it to the list. And sometime when you're looking for stuff to build, just look through the list and like, Hey, I'll just start working on that. Spiny Ovalfruit asks, what are some cars you plan on designing in the future? This kind of connects to the list question. Now, like I said earlier, Ferrari F40 LM in the Pilot livery, Ferrari Enzo in black, Lamborghini Diablo, like multiple variations, SE30, GTR, etc. That's all I know that I'll be building immediately. I want to do a Shelby GT350R at some point. The Boogeyman asks, what are some tips on modifying Speed Champions cars with limited parts? Now, I guess, you go back to this video I made if you wanted some like tips on this, on modifying cars at all. Um, but you could just do minor modifications like change, like add some trimming parts, some splitter, diffuser, wings, etc. That type of thing. VG Ezekiel asks, how did cu creating custom mocks improve your Lego skills? And that's, I guess that's how it works. You build stuff, you learn stuff to build more stuff. Car Nerds asks if I would ever start a car spotting account, which I did. It still exists. I have an Instagram account that's like my account that I just post a bunch of cars on it because I don't have anything else to post. And I had a YouTube channel for a while where I would go car spotting um, and it's out there. So it's like it's on my main channel page. So go for it. I don't think the videos are that great, but it, it was fun to do. Bully, I assume this is how I pronounce your name, builds bricks, asks, what is the hardest car mock I've ever built? Being the Zenvo and name five of my most favorite cars. So narrowing it down to be like Lamborghini Murcielago, Mercedes W140, Ferrari F40 LM, or actually maybe like Ferrari F50 GT instead, McLaren F1 GTR, and like Mercedes W124 probably. Yeah, something like that, that's, that's, that's close enough. Cars, like I said, it's basically just 90 supercars and AMGs is my thing. And C, Nedia, I assume I pronounced the name, asked what is the three car dream garage, very similar question, and I would just narrow it down to Mercy Elgo F1 GTR W124. Is it practical? No. Is it fun? Oh yeah. Would it be fun, I suppose, is the proper way of putting that, but you get the idea. Next up, let us go to Instagram and answer the questions from there. Um, JMonkey19 asks what, what my favorite food is. Now, I like a lot of food. Being partially Indian, I like Indian food a lot, um, basically 
any kind, Chinese food, Mediterranean food, Mexican food, yeah, that, those are some of my favorites, but I, I like, I like all of them, basically, I like food, I'm a food enthusiast, I guess you could say. JP Box asks how he can improve his building skills. This is kind of, I kind of already said this earlier, just practice, just build more cars, take apart the cars you have, and just build them into other things, build other people's models that you think are really good, buy like instructions of other people's models and just look at the instructions, look for free instructions and just go through those and say, oh, how do they do this? Go through the Speed Champions instructions because the modern Speed Champion sets just have some really cool techniques in there and just look through those instructions and like, oh, they did this by connecting these parts or whatever. Just, yeah, the more you can build stuff, the more you'll know how stuff goes together. David asks what my favorite car is and that would be the McLaren F1 GTR in the Lark livery, which I now have a model of right here. Kurobeat asks what my top five racing games are. Now, I have barely played any video games, and I think all of them are, I think basically all of them are racing games. So let's see it. My favorite racing game is Forza Horizon 4. I love that game. I had the like wheel setup and all that, and it was a lot of fun. So yeah, Forza Horizon 4, just cause like, it looks really good. Nice cars, not perfect, but it's really good. Then we have Forza Horizon 5, which I didn't play nearly as much of. I just basically I don't play any games these days, but for Horizon 5 was a lot of fun as well. Um, much better car, it was much better car-wise, but map-wise in comparison to 4, which is really boring. It didn't feel nearly as like nice and like, pretty, I guess, as Horizon 4 did. And so I'm putting it below that. Although now they've introduced a ton of new cars and stuff, so I might put it higher if I'm still playing it. Under that, I would put Need for Speed Heat, which I got on sale for Steam for three bucks, which was maybe the best purchase I've ever made because that game is really sick. For 50 bucks, there's no way it's worth 50 bucks. The story is super short and it, it gets old fast. But for three dollars, it's an incredible deal. I don't know if it's still available for that much, but if it goes on sale again for that much, I recommend you get it. I just had it on a laptop with a keyboard and that game is a lot of fun. I like customized all my favorite cars and stuff and, and the, honestly the cup uh, system is really fun even if it's not great. The music it comes with is horrible so I made this whole like synthwave playlist to go in the background to match the kind of aesthetic the game had. Yeah, I had so much. I might have had more fun at that game than Horizon 4, just objectively not a better game. Those are the only games I've played extensively. Other than that, I've, I've goofed around with other games. Oh, Assetto, Assetto Corsa is actually really good. I still, I, that's the last game I've played. It's very old, I just have it on my laptop. Um, but there's some cool cars, and it's really good if you want like serious racing. Other than that, I'll, I'll just pile up all the other games that I have like attempted to play before, like Forza Motorsport 7 and B-Man. Oh, I probably put B-Man G, B -Man G Drive down there, because it's actually a really good game. It's a lot of fun just to goof around and drive stuff around and stuff. It's actually just a lot of fun to like pretend actual drive around it and do some of the missions they have and stuff. Uh, especially if you just want to relax, um, the delivery missions and that are a lot of fun. Nate asks, what's my favorite mock that I have done? I would put that either the Lamborghini Murcielago, the McLaren F1, or the Barracuda, which is I haven't made a video on yet. Probably the Murcielago at this point though. Mr. Noob asks, what do I think about the 2024 Speed Champions lineup? And so we have gotten some like leaks or rumors as to what those will be, so if you have not seen it, I'm pretty sure they are going to be doing the BMW LMDH car and like the M4 or something. They're going to be doing a McLaren F1 car, the Audi like modern electric e-tron quattro thingy, and I don't quite remember the other one. Um, I'm not that very excited for it, honestly. At this point, like I think Speed Champions is sick. I, I'm, I love it, it exists, obviously. Um, but I'm not that excited for sets. They'll probably be pretty good, um, but these cars do not excite me in particular. I don't think they're just like, they're not, they're not my favorite cars. Last wave, we had a lot of cars that I think are super sick, like the McLaren F1 and the Ferrari 812 and stuff. In this wave, so far, I'm not super hyped for any of these. HCKP13 asks, what, what's my design style? What details do I really care about? Now this varies a lot from model to model, but typically I will try and go for a more clean design than detailed. Now usually this works out where I can still get all the details in and make it clean, but there are models where I will just say like, that's close enough, I'm just gonna leave it here so it's cleaner. Um, this is, there's not that many of these, like certain bits on the Murcielago, maybe on the Viper and the GT2 RS are like that. I'll often try and just go get them proportionally correct, I suppose, so that way this, like if we look at it from the side, it looks like the real thing does from the side and it doesn't look too long or too short. Although sometimes I guess I will modify it so that way it looks right, even if it's not scale accurate. But yeah, generally we'll go for clean designs over details. Although I still manage to include plenty of details. Diablo SV Draws asks if I would ever consider doing a series of modern GT3 cars like the R8, the Huracan, and the 
stag I, I'm drawing a blank on what that would be um, I think modern GT3 cars are really sick and I that is one car I want to build is the new M4 GT3 so I will be building that one at least the Huracan would be a very cool one to build as for the rest of them maybe I don't know that would be cool to do a series of race cars Hakiron I think that's how you pronounce this name asks what is my favorite truck to which I would answer Ford Raptor Ram TRX I don't know they're all way overpowered and way over capable so any of them would be fine um I like the way the Raptor looks now so like the Raptor R or something like that would be cool although at the same time I just like a lot of 80s pickup trucks that are just I don't know any of them but they just they just are cool they have cool boxy design and stuff and I don't know I just really like them fixing 66 and 74 asks what got me into making models and I assume this is how a lot of other uh, model builders got into it but basically I just bought Lego sets I was like oh hey I want to make some of these myself so I buy some parts I take apart some sets and just try and build my own stuff and there you go although I will say I think I actually got into cars through Lego and not the other way around because I remember seeing that I remember buying Speed Champions I saw that Forza Horizon 4 had the Speed Champions expansion I was like I want to drive Lego cars in the racing game so I'll get the video game I'm like oh this video game with cars is kind of cool Cars are cool, and then I got into cars. I, I assume most car builders, it's kind of the other way around. Exo's Automotive's official asks, if I could only have one SUV, one supercar, one hypercar, and one daily driver, what would they be? So SUV, I'm not a big SUV guy, so I am gonna take a G-Wagon because I think even though they are kind of obnoxious, you get them in a cool color and stuff, modern G63 is pretty cool. For supercar, we're gonna be taking a Lamborghini Diablo SE30. Hypercar, we're gonna be taking the McLaren F1 GTR. I have no idea what makes a hypercar a hypercar. Um, so I'm just, the F1 GTR is a very fast, very expensive car, so I'm gonna call it that. And for a daily driver, the W210 E55 AMG. Boy 63 asks if there are any failed attempts at building cars, and there are tons. Um, I'll, I'll show some renders here, or pictures, if I can find them, because I can't think of any off the top of my head. But I build, I attempt to build a lot of stuff that just never ends up working. So yeah, tons of failed attempts. Johnny asks how much time it takes to plan a mock from nothing. This can range anywhere from one week to a couple months like it did with the uh, Zenvo. It just depends on like how much enthusiasm I have for the car and how well the car translates to Lego. When a car translates to Lego, it doesn't mean that, that doesn't mean it necessarily looks like it would be good as a Lego car. For example, this Barracuda looks like it would turn into Lego quite easily, but I managed to overcomplicate the design and turn it into this like monstrosity with all sorts of bizarre techniques that took like a very long time to build. And this Porsche 993 looks really blobby and looks like it would be very hard to make into Lego, except that it only took like three days when I tried to make it, so. Lego Garage 0109 asks what I am most proud of in my life. Um, let's see. This YouTube channel, honestly. Uh, the most you guys caused most of the stuff to happen so I didn't really do that much I guess I, I made some cool videos so I'm proud of that um I've made it this far through school and stuff so I guess that's good and I guess I'm friends with some very cool people so I guess I'm proud of myself for being able to make friends that's a, that sounds weird um I don't know I guess that's it I can do I can do I can do a few cool things um other than that I haven't done anything super remarkable. Lego Garage also asks, what's my favorite video I have ever made? And right now, I think this would be the Murcielago video, as I just, I took some time, I made a video I was very happy with. I think it was like high production value. I just, I put a lot of time into making it like decent, and so I'm quite happy with that one. I just, I really like the model too, so kind of biased. The 190E video, again, a, a video, it's, I guess it's a pretty good video. I feel like it's better than the rest of my videos because it, it kind of took off, but it, it's quite similar to a lot of my videos. I actually, I really like the video where I interviewed a whole bunch of, of other car builders and we talked about building cars um, and tips on how to get started. So that, that's probably my favorite video right now. Lego Car Designs asks if I plan on making more Ferraris, which I do. Like I said, F40 LM, I have a 33 SP that I designed and still need to build. I designed it like two years ago at this point. It needs some modifications. Ferrari Enzo, and then I know those, probably more at some point. Matthew, I know, I think that's not how I pronounce it correctly, but uh, he asks, what else do I build besides cars? And recently I have been trying to get into some other things simply because I want to try recreating other stuff in Lego. So I've been trying to do some uh, cyberpunk type stuff. As you can see, I built this little city diorama that I'm working on. I do want to do some various 
uh, starfighters, ships, etc. Whether that's Star Wars or other sci-fi franchises. So I got one in the works that I'm very excited for. So that'll be out there soon. My buddy Nard NV Carmox asks top five music artists in order ranked. So let's see. Uh, let's go from let's go from bottom to top here. Let me make a little list. I'm gonna make a list real quick because I could talk about music for all day, and I'm gonna if I don't make a little list of them, I'm gonna end up talking about this rest for the rest of the video. All right, so my music listening is very random, and I listen to a, like a lot of a lot of artists I really like, but I only listen to a very few of their songs. And this change and this would change depending on the time. I just like I don't listen to people anymore, or I listen to people a lot at a certain time. So right now, at number five, I'm gonna put Rush, the '80s rock band, because. They have some really cool songs. Um, this is this is Cole. Cole try not to pick a. Cole tries not to pick a musician that has something to do with cars. Challenge impossible. Because Red Barquetta is one of my favorite songs. If you, if you don't listen to the song, you'll you'll get what I mean. Um, and just the whole the whole Moving Pictures album, a lot of the Signals album are just some really really good songs. Are just really. I don't know, something about them is, is so good. In fourth, we have Frank Ocean. I know there's been stuff recently where he's like, this guy's kind of a weird, because he, he like pulls up to Coachella and like gives this really mediocre performance or something and just disappears. And you know what? I honestly don't care if he doesn't make any more music because the two albums that he has out there are just so good. Channel Orange and Blonde. I, know, I mean, he has more music out there than that, obviously, but like, I'm, I'm, if he doesn't release any more music, I'm good with these two because they are really good um, off of Blonde, Pink and White, Knights, Self Control, um, most of them, but those are some of my favorites. And off of Channel Orange, you have Sweet Life, you have Pyramids. Again, a musician who was into cars, uh, he had the orange E30 M3, which is now like all over Instagram. I, I remember, I think it's another meme I saw, like repost pages try not to repost Frank Ocean's car challenge impossible. In third place, we have Jamiroquai, and which is basically one one dude, JK, and a bunch of the band kind of changed a lot. Now they went for a pretty good while, and they made some some really fire songs, as people say these days. Canned Heat is probably my all-time favorite, just because it's this really kind of complex, for lack of a better term, sounding disco song almost, where you got all these like string instruments and I don't know. I, I just love listening to that song. Uh, and then Virtual Insanity, obviously one that a lot of people, a lot more people know. It's a good one. Cosmic Girl, um, it's a good song in itself and the video is super sick. Again, this is another, like literally everybody you've got done so far is into cars here. Um, JK has a, or he had, I'm not sure how many he still has, but he had a really wild car collection. Um, and he's owned quite a few cars that I, are some of my favorite cars. So in second place, we have Tyler, the creator, continuing the streak of musicians owning cars. I swear, I'm not doing this intentionally. I just like these people's music. They just happen to have stuff to do with cars. So as probably most people are, obviously the more like the kind of general fans of Tyler are more into the most recent three albums as opposed to the earlier four albums being Flower Boy, Igor, and Call Me If You Get Lost. Um, especially Call Me If You Get Lost. I'm not really into rap music, but I think the more the different stuff going on about these albums is really cool, where he talks, he talks about like pretty deep stuff and he has just some really different um, sounds and it's like it sounds nice it does not sound average so much rap music sounds average it just all sounds the same maybe I'm not into it so go figure but something about Tyler's music is just it's very not, it's not average but it's also really good at the same time like 911 Mr. Lonely I'm, that song literally got, says I'm I know you're sick like saying along the lines of I know you're sick of me talking about cars which is I, don't know, just, I find too funny because I feel like that's how a lot of people feel about me. And he's into cars. If you've seen his music videos, he's really into cars. So, yeah. Number one, we have the only musicians on this list who are not, well, only sort of into cars. Now that I think about it, well, either way, it's Coldplay. Now that I think about it, the drummer at least owned a Veyron once, so everybody on this list has something to do with cars. Yeah, modern Coldplay, it's fine. I'm not really into it. But anything like before, like Viva La Vida and all the albums before that are just really good. So X and Y is maybe my favorite album ever to exist. So like Low, Talk, basically every song on it. Parachutes, Viva La Vida, Rush of Blood to the Head, all just really, really great albums. Obviously, that's not I don't necessarily consider them to be like the greatest 
musicians ever. I just really like their stuff. Obviously, maybe I'd put people like Stevie Wonder or other like people who maybe have done more revolutionary stuff as like better musicians, but I would put, I would put them as my favorite right now. Like I said, I could talk about music forever, and I've, I've already talked about it for way too long. Um, my buddy Blake asks, what piece that doesn't already exist would be a game changer? A lot of off-brand manufacturers have come up with some like super cursed looking, kind of hilarious parts that would actually be kind of handy. Something, something along the lines of, I'm not sure what exactly, but there's a lot of cool bar pieces, or bar connectors and stuff, so something along the lines of that would be very handy because like something that's like thin to be able to fit through gaps and stuff, it's like a combination of, I'll put them up on the screen, combination of these parts with like some studs on the ends or something to be able to connect stuff would be handy. He also asks if I could run my own line of speed champion sets, what would it be? So for the sake of not going overboard, I'll just do a standard run with like five sets, I believe it is, with like one two pack. So I would probably do a lot of my favorite cars. I'm just gonna be, just gonna be going over the same cars over and over again. So I would do something like Diablo SE30 individual. Maybe we'll, we'll try and, okay, we'll try and make it a little bit more modern and old cars. So LEGO usually likes to do some muscle cars. So I would probably say something like a, like an old Cuda, but like in lime green, I think would be sick. Old Mercedes would be sick, like a classic, like a 190E. I'm not sure they would do that. So maybe something more like, maybe something more modern, like the, what's a, what's a modern race car? The Mercedes have a modern race car, like AMG GT3 race car, that would be sick. Two packs, old and new cars are obviously usually how it's done. I think that's kind of cool. So something like oh, Diablo and Revent, Oh, I, prevent, I was gonna say Revuelto, but honestly, Reventon would be way sicker. Mercy, I'll go Reventon would be a sick two pack. Diablo, Countach, Countach, Kunt, Aventador, Mira, Revuelto, something like that would be sick. So, obviously, Group B would be sick because we had the Quattro, so Integrale would be sick, 037, stuff like that. Modern Rally would also be cool, although I don't really get into it as much. And then, like, Hypercars would be sick. So, again, we have the Pagani license, so I'd love to see Zonda Huayra two pack, or just Zonda by itself. They have the Koenigsegg license as well, so again, Jamera I'd love to see. Um, some older Koenigseggs, that'd be a cool two-pack is like a Gera CCGT, a Gera CCXR, or something like that. Probably just go for some like really hyped up cars, honestly, because that's kind of where it's, it's cool to see in LEGO, where it's kind of something, something that's not super niche, but something that is like iconic to an extent. Blake also asked, what is the ultimate money no option LEGO model build scale wise and car so that would i would probably go with the mercy algo because it's my favorite car i would probably just do like a i don't know what that scale it's like the creator expert scale uh like, like 3d supercar bricks and sp lineup build in but that scale mercy algo rgt do like a full sticker livery and 3d printed wheels and stuff like the black and white the blank plane uh livery that would be really sick and with that, that's it for the video so thank you guys so much again for all the support um we're gonna be doing some really sick stuff here so stay tuned. And with that, I hope you might come back for the next video. I have to work on these outros. That was really rough. <laughs>